Good afternoon. Thanks for tuning in to Cooking Together live from Austin, Texas. Today we're going to make a Provencal vegetable soup, also known as soup au pistou. It's the French word for pesto. And so this soup is super fresh and delicious using all of the produce that you can get in the summertime and late spring here in Austin. And when I got my CSA box this week from Steelboat Farm um, that had tomatoes in it and I had green beans from my garden and basil on my growing on my porch, I thought this is a perfect time to make soup au pis too or Provencal vegetable soup. Uh, so I put the recipe for you, uh, the link to that, so that you can follow along or you can make it later on. But basically you need whatever vegetables you have in your fridge. You can make some substitutions if you don't have everything that the recipe suggests. I'm heating up a pan here so I can put in uh, some onion. The recipe also says you can use a leek. Um, this soup, so I'm just going to do a little bit of veggie prep here since I didn't have time to do it before. And that way you'll get to see how long it actually takes to make this recipe. I have taught a class called the Taste of Southern France many times. Uh, I am, uh, my mother's side is French, and so I've always had a, a curiosity and interest in, um, I guess, preference for French food and learning about the traditions of French cooking. My mother introduced me to Niçoise salad when I, I think I was in seventh grade taking French class in middle school. And uh, we were supposed to bring a potluck dish for a holiday celebration and she introduced me to uh, Niçoise salad and uh, Bouche de Noël. I think we made one one year and one the next year. And that kind of got me started being interested in French cooking because those two dishes were so amazing. And then this soup I actually didn't know about until, you know, a few, three or four years ago. I was reading a book that I must have picked up at the library called uh, Mastering the Art of French Eating, which sounds a lot like Julia Child's cookbook, Mastering the Art of French Cooking, right? That you may have heard of her first cookbook that she collaborated with two other French women to write. Anyway, this was just a novel with um, recipes included called the Mastering the Art of French Eating by Anne Ma. And I talk about it in the blog post about this soup. If you want to look that up later, you can. It's a great book. She talks about how she and her husband moved to France. I think he was an ambassador, worked um, for the US government. And as soon as they got to Paris, which was supposed to be their destination for a few years and kind of a dream come true job location, uh, he got reassigned to Iraq because it was during uh, the war in Iraq and so that was upsetting on many levels but she was basically stuck in Paris um, for a year by herself and at first she was uh, I guess a little bit depressed and, and upset she was there by herself and without her husband and then she realized wait a minute I'm in Paris uh, this is an awesome place to be, especially when you love cooking like I do. And so she quickly adapted to being in one of the most amazing places on earth. I'm sauteing these onions in a little bit of olive oil. 
You don't need a ton of oil right at this moment because we're going to be adding a pesto at the end that has oil in it. But anyway, she tells a story of spending the year in France and traveling around to different areas and learning about the regional cuisine of France. And one of the dishes that she learned about was this Provençal vegetable soup or soup au pistou. And how she learned about it was she went to this village in southern France and the villagers there, the people um, in the summertime when all of these vegetables were being harvested would literally get together in someone's kitchen and make a whole bunch of this soup au pistou and then they would share it and it was a real community event. So imagine something like a tamale making party that happens in uh, Latin America. And this is like a soup, vegetable soup making party with all of the delicious summer produce that gets harvested. And you know, sometimes you don't know what to do with all of it. There's zucchini and tomatoes and green beans and I'm going to put my potatoes in with carrots. I mean, potatoes in with the onion. I'm going to kind of dice everything up fairly small for this soup. And I like to add a little pinch of salt as we go to layer the flavors in the soup. Time to add some carrots. And I'm not measuring anything. I do have measurements in the recipe. If you're concerned about that. Like I say to basically put two cups of everything in there. Two cups of leeks or onions, two cups of carrots. So we're gonna do about equal amounts of everything. But for instance, if you don't have enough of one vegetable, don't panic. You can put in a little bit more of another one. I'm going to add a little water just to prevent that from burning. You can probably see that was starting to brown a little bit on the bottom, but we caught it in time. Just put a little water in there, prevent it from burning. So anyway, uh, that book introduced me to this idea of a Provencal vegetable soup. It reminds me a little bit of a minestrone from Italy, right? Where it's got lots of vegetables, some tomatoes, but it's actually prepared in a very different way. And it doesn't feature pasta or rice, although you can serve it with pasta, rice, or bread if you wish, but it has potatoes in it. Uh, so it's pretty much a complete meal just on its own. I love having this for lunch, especially because you can just take it out of the fridge and make a quick lunch when you're trying to get things done during the day. And it's very hydrating and just loaded with uh, vitamins and minerals from all of these root vegetables and we're going to add some green beans. So when I decided that I wanted to teach this recipe for a class, this was a few, I don't know, maybe two years ago, two, three years ago that I first started teaching this in a class and I decided I better reference some other versions of the recipe. So I went to Julia Child's Mastering the Art of French Cooking, which I might be able to show you later. We have a first edition copy of that that uh, Nelson's mother happened to have, which is funny because she says she doesn't like to cook, uh, but she gave it to us when she moved to an apartment because she planned on never cooking again. That was one of her 
goals. <laughs> and, uh, but she appreciates food a lot, so that must be why she had the cookbook. She used it um, when she was cooking for her family. And then when she didn't have to cook for anybody, she was like, I'm done with that. Does that sound accurate, Nelson? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so anyway, we got a copy of, first edition copy of Julia Child's first cookbook. Now I've seen it's in many volumes, like three or four volumes were made out of this original cookbook that she had. But we have the one volume edition. I kind of, I don't always do this, but I'm just going to add some water as we go prevent burning and it'll start it cooking a little bit. Sometimes I saw saute everything first, you know, the onions and then the potatoes and carrots will come in next. But um, since I got the onions sauteed nicely with the potatoes, I think we're okay to add the liquid now. And it'll start the cooking process uh, so that the soup will be done a little bit faster. I, think I meant to add some more of these potatoes, but no, I'm not sure if I should. Uh, let's see. What else do we want? This is actually a point where I usually add the water because once I've got the onion, carrot, and potato in there, because those take longer to cook. So I'm going to start those kind of stewing. So I've got this homegrown zucchini here that's irregularly shaped because something was chewing on it. I'm going to cut this into strips and then dice it up. So when I looked in Julia Child's cookbook, she had the greatest quote um, to kind of introduce this recipe. So I need to remind myself once we have everything in the soup pot to read that to you because I thought it was so great. Kind of give you the spirit of this dish and remind you of where it comes from and how it was really uh, a community effort to make this soup. So Izzy said she would help grate the Parmesan cheese, which is, you can put that on either in the pesto or you can put it on as a garnish at the end. Um, optionally, you know, if you want to have this dairy free, you don't have to put it in, but it does add a nice flavor at the end. But Izzy said she would come and help me with that part. So got our zucchini in there. I might add a little bit of yellow squash too. I'll cut this into strips. And then dice it up. And then there was one other cookbook that I referenced. I just happened to get a copy of uh, uh, Cook's Illustrated. I think they called it um, All Time Best Soups, something like that. And. I happened to get a copy of it right around the time when I was writing a recipe for this and I looked at that one too and I kind of, you know, combined ideas from all three recipes to make this one that we have now. Hey Izzy, could you get me some more filtered water in this pot about halfway, halfway up? Thank you. Okay, let's see. I haven't made this for a while, so I'm actually checking my own recipe. So let this simmer. 
for a bit while we get some other things prepared. We're going to be making a pesto like I was talking about before. So these are beans that I'm proud to say grew in our own garden. I wasn't sure since we're new to vegetable gardening since this past fall, I wasn't sure how many of the bean plants were going to come up. So I just planted a lot of bean plants and they pretty much all came up. So I've been sharing uh, green beans with all my neighbors and friends. I've been able to drop it off at their house. <laughs> and green beans is one of the really special things about the soup. You don't often see green beans in soup. Lots of times you'll see, thank you, Izzy. Lots of times you'll see peas, um, other, other green vegetables like spinach or kale. Um, but I really love the taste of green beans in the soup. And they'll take about three to five minutes to cook in there. So I'll put those in in just a little bit. At this point, I think it might be good to put these white beans in. These were actually in a box. I've never gotten beans from a box before, but I took them out thinking, well, maybe these will taste better than canned beans. They were so tasteless and, uh, you know, didn't taste it just like canned beans. So I cooked them with a little bit of broth and kombu, sea vegetable, which looks like this. And then I salted them and I simmered them for about maybe 45 minutes. And I think they're gonna be tastier in the soup than if I just put them in straight. Take that kombu out. So, a little more water. I'm going to get ready to make our pesto. So usually I like to take the seeds out, which may require a little bit of doing here. I used to have a small colander, small strainer. That was perfect for this, but I think I left it at a cooking class, so I haven't replaced it yet. But anyway, pretty easy to take out the seeds if you cut the tomato in half. You don't have to get every single seed out, but... And this tomato was a little bit overripe. I had it in the refrigerator so that it wouldn't completely go bad on me, but it's a perfect thing to put in a soup, right? Because it's kind of watery. And once I have these seeds out, I'm going to save the pulp because I'll be able to strain the juice out and put that in the soup. Okay. I can hear the soup coming up to a boil, so I'll be able to turn that down in a minute. And I'm just going to roughly chop the tomatoes because I'm going to put these, take out the stem part at the top. I'm going to be putting these in the blender to make the pesto. And before I learned about the soup, I didn't know that you could make a pesto with tomato in it. I mainly made pesto out of uh, green herbs and, you know, parsley and um, basil, olive oil, garlic, that sort of thing. And then I learned, oh my gosh, you can make pesto out of anything. It's just the name for sauce. But usually it's got herbs and garlic and olive oil and you know could have some other things in it too 
So, let's see. Okay. To make the pesto. down to low. It's very hard to see how low it is without turning it all the way off. Okay. Our tomato in. Probably could have even done one more tomato, but this will be okay. Some three to four cloves of garlic. Put some fresh basil in here. olive oil. So last thing. So we need somewhere between a quarter cup and a half cup of olive oil. And then blend that up. I'm going to put just a pinch of salt in there to kind of hold it together. And I don't know if there's any way to turn the volume down, but if you can turn your volume down for a minute. I'm going to put this blender on, so I'll be right back. Almost done blending that. I just want to put the rest of the tomato juice in there so we don't waste it. And then blend it up one more time. Okay. And we're going to reserve this beautiful tomato, basil, garlic, olive oil, pesto for the end when we're just going to simmer that in with the soup for the last three minutes or so of cooking. I'm going to add the green beans. Looks like I could use a little more water. As you can see, this is making a big soup just with two cups of each vegetable. So if you want to make a smaller amount of this soup, go ahead. Just, you know, cut the ingredients in half. If you're just feeding one person or two people, but I like to make a large amount so I can have it for a few days. And if you are going to reheat this soup, I recommend, um, adding something fresh to it each time. So after you've reheated the portion that you're gonna have the next time, you can, here's a little basil leaf we can use for garnish. Um, you can just add something fresh, like some chopped parsley or some chopped basil or something on the top to garnish it. Uh, you could also add uh, a little bit of fresh spinach, but just add it to the portion that you're gonna heat up so that it will be really fresh the day that you make it. Okay, so I think I want to show you a couple things. Let's see. Take this out of the way. Is this out of the way or is it showing? Okay. okay, so I wanted to read to you from that Julia Child cookbook called Mastering the Art of French Cooking, because I thought it was so, so neat. She said, early summer in the Mediterranean, early summer is the Mediterranean season for soup au pistou when fresh basil, fresh white beans, 
and broad mange to beans are all suddenly available. And the market women shout in the streets, Mesdames, fait le bon piste, fait le pistu. The pistu itself, like the Italian pesto, is a sauce made of garlic, basil, tomato, and olive oil, and is just as good on spaghetti um, as it is in this rich vegetable soup. Fortunately, this soup is not confined to summer and fresh vegetables, for you can use canned navy beans, fresh or frozen string beans, and a fragrant dried basil. Other vegetables in season may be added with the green beans as you wish, such as peas, diced zucchini, and green and red bell peppers. So that was from Mastering the Art of French Cooking by Simone Beck, Louisette Bertol, and Julia Child. So I think it's really fun to be able to try these old recipes that have been made for centuries, maybe longer, uh, that communities have been nourishing themselves with. And we were planning to go to France uh, this past Monday on June 1st, and our flights got canceled, and we pretty much knew uh, by the end of March that we weren't going to be able to go. Then our flights got canceled, and our hotel got canceled, and uh, but that was going to be uh, my first time there, and so we hoped to go back another time. We were going to visit a friend in the Loire Valley, and we were all going to go up to Mont Saint Michel to check out um, all the beautiful things up there. And we were what we were really looking forward to doing was each day going to the uh, outdoor market and buying whatever was fresh and coming home and making a nice meal uh, with our friend that lives there. And just kind of exploring and uh, seeing all the beautiful castles and visiting some vineyards. And we didn't have anything really specific planned. We just wanted to go and uh, see what we could see. and. Uh, eat eat the food and that sort of thing. So instead of doing that trip, I decided that I would spend the month of June uh, doing French recipes, healthy French recipes for my blog and for my Cooking Together subscription. And so, um, let's see, starting this yeah, starting this Sunday, we'll have our first recipe on cooking together. That'll be with the French theme and a video to go along with it. And I'm also going to have a French dessert on there. Um, still kind of a surprise, but it is going to have espresso in it. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, I'm deciding at week by week what I want to put in these uh, French res uh, French recipes for cooking together. And I've been finding some really uh, neat recipes in cookbooks by Jacques Pepin and Julia Child. And um, I'm finding recipes and, and basically redoing some recipes so that they're not just uh, full of cream and butter. Not that that's all together that bad, but um, especially in the summertime, you don't want a lot of heavy food and a lot of people are trying to cut back on dairy. So these are going to be really healthy French recipes. And I find that, um, you know, if you look at home style French recipes, most of them aren't totally laden with cream and butter because that was really expensive to get, especially uh, during war times and times when people were just trying to survive, they would get really creative and use the ingredients that they had on hand. So there's plenty of French recipes that are super healthy and delicious. And so I want to focus on those. So let's take a look. I'm 
just going to have to wait until the veggies are cooked through. So, and I'm also going to want to add the pesto and some salt. I'm just going to check this to make sure the green beans are close to being done. I think they need another minute or two. The salt level. is pretty close. I'm going to add another two big, two big pinches of salt and a little bit of black pepper. Black pepper kind of lightens things up, especially if you have a creamy sauce or something that's thick like this. It helps lighten it up. And I think we're getting very close to being able to add this pesto. So I'm going to turn this down to a very low simmer. And add in this tomato pesto. This is kind of the really exciting part of this recipe where it goes from being kind of a ordinary humdrum vegetable soup to this like, wow, this is amazing kind of soup. And I'm actually going to blend this up one more time with a little bit of extra. This way you can Get all that good pesto in the soup. We'll try to get all that out later with the spatula so we don't waste it. And get the rest of this out. And my spatula. This looks really delicious. So in the summertime, if you're eating this in the summertime, you can let this come to room temperature or maybe not room temperature, but let it sit for about five minutes off the heat before you dive into eating it. Otherwise, you're probably going to get very hot when you're eating this. But I always like to suggest to people to go ahead and have soup throughout the summertime because it's so hydrating. Much more hydrating this than just drinking a glass of water because you have the minerals in there from the sea salt and your vegetables and they all get dissolved into the broth. And it's gonna keep you much more hydrated than if you just drink guzzle down water all day. So I'm giving you permission to have soup anytime you want. So you do have to make sure to add enough salt that the flavors of all the vegetables and the green beans and the white beans in there come yeah. out. All right, you got a question from Janet Renaris. I'm curious as to why you Hi, use water over stock for the soup. I probably should have mentioned about half the time I'll use a stock in here rather than water. Um, it ends up having an adequate amount of flavor because of the pesto that you add that you don't have to use a stock. But if you use something like a chicken stock or a vegetable stock in here, it'll be even more flavorful. The only thing I wouldn't use probably is a, 
a boxed um, vegetable stock from the store that's got a lot of tomato and yeast extract and flavorings because it's going to compete with the flavor of the pesto that you make. And so I think you'll enjoy it better if you either make it with water or with a, like a very lightly um, seasoned stock, like a chicken stock. Or what I recommend in the recipe on my blog is if you're using leeks in the recipe instead of onions, that wash the leek tops, the greens, really, really well. And then just boil those in some water for about 20 to 30 minutes and use the stock from the leeks to make your soup. I've done that almost every time I've taught the class where I make the soup, I use a leek stock. And uh, it's just so delicious and so light, but it has a nice flavor to it. Uh, so that is a great question. Thanks for asking that. Also, uh, Dave is there, and your mom is there, and Monique's son to her. Oh, great. Hi, everybody. Hi, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching. Yeah, so I think this is pretty much about ready to go. Uh, sometimes I serve this over some rice in a bowl. Sometimes I serve it on its own or with uh, some bread or even some pasta. So you could cook up some bow tie pasta or spiral pasta. Um, so Izzy, I think we're ready for you. Izzy, Izzy, you come and grate some cheese. We're gonna do the final touches Okay, I'll just kind of show you how you might want to serve this. If you want to get some of this into, maybe into a bowl. Thank you. So you can see about how thick it is. It's a pretty brothy soup. Probably more brothy than I usually make my minestrone soups. Hey, what is this? This is uh, the Provencal vegetable soup. It has the pesto in it. So you can serve it like that with a little bit of chopped parsley or basil on top if you want, or you can garnish it with some Parmesan like we've got here. Hey, Susie. So, it smells so good. I can smell the basil and the tomatoes and all of the vegetables that we have in there. Can you see it? Yeah. Can you see it, Nelson? Yeah. Okay. How do you want me to? Yeah, I'm <laughs> trying to make it the best view for you. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you'll go to cooklifeheal.com to check out the recipe. I do have the link to the recipe. Um, I'll, I'll make sure that it's on this, this post. And um, also check out Cooking Together subscription, see if you might be interested in joining the community to be cooking healthy together. And I look forward to seeing you here next Wednesday. So have a great week. Hi, Kevin. Yeah. No.